raise the master of everything. He's a great God. Oh, he's a great God. He's my Savior, my Lord and King. How I thank him. For the love He bestows For saving my soul from all sin For all the good things He has given to me Contentment and peace reign within Oh, He's a great God Oh, He's a great God He's the Master of everything He's a great He's a great God. He's my Savior, my Lord and King. Amen. You may be seated. He's been good to us, ain't he? Not only has he saved us, he's given us a whole lot of things on top of that. Been good to all of us. All the good things he's given us, and I appreciate everything he's given me. He's been awful good to me and my family. Young people, you want to come sing this morning?
done this in a long time, but uh, I just bring this up for good on it. Cause, cause the older you get, it, it, um, start thinking about heaven. You know, I can remember being youthful. You kind of didn't think about that too much, but it seemed like the older I get, the more I ponder over that and just looking forward to it. And, yeah. Won't it be wonderful there? And if y'all know it, y'all help me sing it. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? Ended the troubles and cares of the story land, oh, won't it be wonderful there? Oh, won't it be wonderful there? the supernal one oh won't it be wonderful there praising adoring the matchless eternal one oh won't it be wonderful there oh won't it be wonderful We never be sweeping us, oh, won't it be wonderful there? Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping us, oh, won't it be wonderful there? Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. You brought me from nothing, and here I am, feasting from the table of the great I am. I'm not a stranger, I'm feeling at home, so thank you, sweet Jesus, for giving this song. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the joy that I feel in my soul. And thank you for the victory I know. I know where I'm going. I know where I am. I'm on my way homeward by the blood of the Lamb. I'm led by the Spirit, so I'm not alone. So thank you, sweet Jesus, for giving this song. 
Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for the joy that I feel in my soul. And thank you for the victory I Praise the Lord. Sometimes that's all we can do is just say thank you. I ask for a lot, but let's be honest, we need to do more thinking than we do asking because he's given us over abundantly above all that we're able to ask or thank already. He's been gracious to us. He's been good to us. I appreciate a Savior that's been as good to me as he has. If you have your Bibles this morning, Genesis chapter number 27, Genesis 27, Good to see you in the Lord's house. I trust you've come to worship the Lord. He's worthy, ain't he? He is worthy. I know the enemy puts a, a got to, the people of God kind of seems like in a in a press, and uh, but when you put something in a press, it'll bring out what's on the inside. And uh, I want to have the Lord on the inside, don't you? Amen. So you pray this morning that the Holy Ghost will just help us a few minutes, and I feel like the Lord's given us a thought. So you pray that God will help us. Verse 21 of Genesis 27. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice. But the hands are the hands of Esau. He discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, and his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. You may be seated. I appreciate you for standing in reverence to the Word of God, and I do say that all the time. I guess it's a habit. But I do appreciate you standing in reverence to the Word of God. I want to preach this morning, if the Lord will help me just a few moments, if He'll help me, amen, on putting on a front, just putting on a front. Now, there is such a thing as fooling everybody around you and uh, putting on a front, but you can't fool God, by the way, amen, but whatever that you do decide to put on a front, there's a lot of things that goes in to just being fake. And uh, I don't want to be fake. And please don't hold back on me this morning. Amen. Uh, you, you, I'm not, I'm not going to preach. I'm not going to be mean. Amen. But if there's ever been a time that me and you and the church world needs to be real and genuine, it's now. I mean, there's no, uh, we're getting, we say it all the time, and we're seven days closer uh, than we was last Sunday when we said it. The end of this thing is just right in our face. I mean, he's coming and the, it's nigh at the door. And the, the world is going to hell and they're looking for reality. And I'm afraid they ain't a whole lot of reality left even in the church houses as we know it. Now the church house is not, amen, the padded pews and the steeple. It's the people that make it up. Amen. But I want to say, Brother Ethan, you can still be real if you want to be, but it's going to take a pattern after the Lord Jesus Christ if we want to be real. Now I'm thinking here, amen, in this scripture, and I'm, I'm, I'm just going to preach to myself this morning, and if you fall under the category, whatever you say it, uh, then you'll just have to say, oh me. But now, I was uh, thinking about this here, amen, as uh, Isaac had come close, amen, he was getting ready to die, and he wanted to bless his older son and that was just kind of the custom the older son got the blessing amen and it was time for him to pass it along and uh, he and he told Esau which was a man of the field a hairy man and uh, and I read it to you there but I'm just going to uh, preach it again this morning and, and uh, Jacob was a smooth man which dwelled in the tents I guess he was a mama's boy as you could call it and uh, Esau 
was out in the field a whole lot and evidently he had killed a deer a time or two and brought it in for his daddy and fixed it for him to eat. Amen. But now his daddy is getting ready to die and his eyes were dim. Amen. And he wanted to pass the blessing along unto his elder son. Amen. So he told him to go out and he told him to hunt. Now anybody that's ever done any deer hunting, they some people like Homer that can go out here at Walmart and kill one, but most people's got to hunt them. Amen. You've got to go out there. And it takes a little while to figure out how they operate. Amen. And know how they're traveling and what they're going to do. Amen. So here he goes. But now the other side of the wall, amen, the mama's listening and she wants her boy, amen, to have the blessing. And, and so he, and she said, go out there and get me a couple of, amen, of kids, which was goats, and bring them in and let me fix them for him. Amen. So the first thing is, amen, in order to get the blessing and put a front on, amen, and be disguised, you've got to disguise yourself. Amen. But I want to say this morning, amen, if you're having to disguise yourself, amen, to be a Christian on Sunday, but the rest of the time you're not, can I say you need to be born again. Amen. When Jesus saves you and changes you, amen, he changes you from the inside out. Can I say this morning, any man being in Christ is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Jesus don't give you a coat to cover up what's underneath it. Amen. Because so you can take it off when you get back down at the world and let them see, amen, that there's never been a change. When Jesus changes you, amen, the old deeds of the man are done away with. Amen. You're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Can I say this morning, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. When I'm at work, it don't make no difference. When they start cussing, you need to talk about Jesus. And they'll either quit or they'll hit the road. Amen. You don't blend in with the things around you. Amen. You say, I don't want to feel bad or stand out. I don't want to hear what the world has to say. Amen. Bitter and sweet water can't come out of the same fountain. I'm proud that Jesus cleaned up my fountain. I said, I'm glad Jesus cleaned up my fountain. Hallelujah. And now I'm not ashamed. No matter where you see me, I'm not ashamed of who I am because I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. The first step in being disguised, amen, we want the easy way out. Come on now. I know the Spirit's down this morning, but it don't make no difference. I'm going to try to preach anyway. Amen. More than likely, amen, they either had a fence built for the kids, the goats, or else they had them so tame they could just call their name and they'd come right up to them. But a deer had to be hunted down. It wasn't easy to prepare a meal. Amen. Now, I'm going to preach to the pulpit this morning, me. There was a time, Brother Johnny, where the men of God would pray and God would show them things. There was a time to where the teachers would get along and pray and God would show them things. See, you don't have to call me, tell me what Homer's, I'm just using y'all. You don't have to call me and tell me what Homer's doing because if God wants me to preach on him, he can show me. Whenever I go to revivals, I don't want the pastor doing nothing but inviting me. I want to go with a word from God that I feel like God has given me. If I got to call a man to come and preach revival at Beth Eden and sit in with him a week in advance and tell him every single thing that's going on, I ain't much and he ain't either if we can't get a voice from God. Amen. There was a time to where going after God was worth something to us. Amen. If I've got to fast today, Lord, help me to go after it. If I've got to fast three days, help me to go after it. You say, hey, I can't fast. God knows what you can fast from. Some of us can fast from food. Some of us do good to fast from our cell phone. Some of us do good to throw the remote away. Amen. And not turn the TV on. Some of you do good not to turn the radio on. Some of us do good if we're 
focus our eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I say, Jesus wants you as bad. Amen. Wants you to come close to him. But if you want to get close to him, you've got to make the first step. He said, if you'll draw nigh unto me, I'll draw nigh unto you. He's not going to beat us over the head and make us hunger after him. But those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Praise God. But you can't eat off the table of the world and be hungry for the things of God. Amen. Amen. It bound to have been easier. Had to have been. Because Jacob went to the field, bought back two kids. She skinned them out. She made the food, got the skins ready to put on his hands and on his neck. Went to the closet and got Esau's clothes and got ready to go in and be a deceiver in front of their daddy. It had to be easier. But can I tell you, being a Christian is never going to get any easier. Amen. If you're going to go against the grain, you're going to have to fight. If you're going to go upstream, you're going to have to fight. If you're going to make it over the falls, you're going to have to fight. You can turn around and go with the flow, but you'll fall with every temptation of the world. You'll be back down yonder in the world. You'll try to blend in with the choir, but you're going downstream. Amen. But oh, I don't understand them people that lay out a church all the time, but they're still praising the Lord once a month when they come. Amen. But we come, and we come twice on Sunday, and we come on Wednesday. We read our Bible. We go to revival, and we're still fighting with everything in us. Can I say I believe I'm a going upstream we're almost to the end of this thing and I don't want to be a deceiver I'm not going to put on a front help us to be real and genuine Lord help this church right here in the middle of Waynesville North Carolina to be a powerhouse but if we're going to be a powerhouse we can't put on a front amen I appreciate a sinner that admits they're a sinner but I can't hardly find none. Oh, I'm all right. I feel perfectly fine in the decisions that I've made. How can you say that when it goes directly against the Bible you read? Amen. We'll put a Bible under our arm. We'll go to the vehicle and get come to church. But yet we fit in with all the worldly stuff. Can I say we're putting on front? Do you wonder why they come in lost chewing, chewing gum and writing notes and leave the same way? Because the church has lost its power. The pulpits have lost their power. I never dreamed, Brother Johnny, that I'd ever see a day to where when a church needed a pastor, they have to search Amen. And they'll get resume after resume after resume. I'm thinking seriously. Amen. I told a fella up there in Crusoe, if you want a man of God in your church, your church is going to have to go to the Laurel Thicket and get down on their knees. Don't depend on an association to send you somebody. They don't know who you are. But I know a God that does. I said, I know a God that does. He knows what I need and he knows how to send it. And if we'll get out into business and not put on a front. Don't try to make it easy. Let's say, God, if it means me praying all night long, help me to pray all night long. Nobody said it'd be easy, but if you want the real thing, we got to be willing to go the extra mile. Hallelujah. Amen. We've had Bible studies here. Can I just be blunt this morning? Bible studies, prayer meetings, after about three or four weeks of it, it's almost embarrassing to come because everybody loses interest. It's like when you buy a new vehicle, you wash it for about a month unless you're Johnny or my wife. And then in about the next month, two months, three months, four months, two years, you grow corn in the floorboard because the new wears off. The new wears off. See, when I first came here, y'all would sit there and cry, some of you. There ain't many of you here that was here when I come. They'd sit there and cry, but after about a year, sleep through the best of them. It's because that voice is the same. 
Brother Johnny has pastored. He knows exactly what I'm talking about. He's been in the way longer than I've been saved. But I've, I've been with him enough to see the burden of the church. And it's almost the church is just waiting on him to do it all. I love everybody here, but if you're waiting on me to do it all, this church will sink. This church will go down. Because there's times I fight. And I can't make it without you. Just because I'm and my name's on the sign is the only reason I'm here is because God put me here and I want to do my very best amen but God put me here but no different than me being here you're there so if we'll all work together amen and not put on a front and be genuine the sinners that walk in the back of that church can be, get under conviction when they pull in the parking lot do you believe that? absolutely I believe that but this should be more than a building it needs to be the house and the pit and the ground of the truth. Amen. Number two. Number two. Something innocent had to die to cover up somebody else being a deceiver. Amen. The goats wasn't supposed to die. It was the deer. So the deer died in vain because daddy wasn't hungry after he ate what the deceiver had. So let me say, there's always somebody in your life that's going to be affected by you being a deceiver. Even Esau, after all this was done, told his dad, he said, Jacob is rightly named. He is a deceiver. He's rightly named. You know what he was saying? He's living out his name. A saying he's one thing being totally something different. Something innocent had to die. Do you realize these people watching you? Are you real or not? Come on, talk to me. Are you real or not? Amen. If I could come and watch you and follow you around, and I do see a whole lot more than you realize I see. I see you in places you have no business being. Doing things you have no business doing. Oh no, who am I? Hey, if you're nowhere that you're ashamed of, I'm not talking to you. You're a deceiver. Don't tell people you go here to church when you're doing the things you're doing. Because if some of the people that works at them stores where you go and you're doing things you shouldn't be doing come here, they say, man alive, I never dreamed Christians does what he does. There's somebody watching you. There's somebody watching you, Joe. Somebody, me and my daddy sitting on the porch the other day, and you know what he said? They, somebody thinks more of you than they do anybody else. So you be careful how you're acting in front of them. You be careful what you say. You be careful where you go. You be careful who you talk about. Hey, man, you say, I don't like that preaching. You be careful who you tell you don't like it. Because them grandbabies may backslide and go away from God. Hey, Amen. Because they see you don't like the preacher. And if you don't like them, I don't like them either. God help us to realize we need to be real we gotta be real they said we gotta be real amen whenever that the world looks at us they've got every right in the world to feel of us and see if we're real or not amen hallelujah something else had to die to cover up the lie thank you for being true Johnny Because Joe testifies about you all the time. You're the one who led him to the Lord. If you go astray, he's going to watch you. And if you still come, I'm just using you for an example. If you still come and you carry on the things you've always done, he's going to think he can take that same path. But can I go ahead and tell you, Paul said, follow me. But he said, as I follow Christ. 
If you're going to follow me, you be sure you look around me and make sure there's another set of footprints in the sand. And in the middle of all them footprints, there's a nail print. And if I'm following that, you can be assured you can go ahead and follow me. It's going to be okay. Amen. But if I try anything new, Paul said, don't you dare believe them. If they preach in any other name but this name, Jesus, don't believe them. Amen. They're a deceiver. God help us in 2023. It's still the same way. It's still the straight way. And God help us. Amen. To always walk in this good straight way. I don't want nobody to die on my behalf. Amen. Number three. You're trying to be somebody you're not. And I take it for as it is. His daddy is blind. Who are you? I've got you. I've got you supper. I'm ready to be blessed. Who are you? I'm Esau. Come over here. Come over here. Man, can I be just, can I just preach this morning? I'm a Christian. Come over here. Come over here. Let's go to your car. Let's turn that radio on. The Bible said, whew, Lord help me this morning. The Bible said that whenever the walls of Jericho fell down flat, good night, what an awesome miracle. The next time they went into Ai, they was defeated. And I preached this wrong for a long time. They went down there underneath the tent of Achan. And the Bible said he had a wedge of gold and a wedge of silver and a Babylonish. Not Babylonian, Babylonish garment. So it didn't say it was from Babylon, but it sure did look a lot like it. Nobody says you're a whore, but you sure do look a lot like it. Nobody says you're a drunkard. Boy, the way you treat this, the way you look at it out there in the world, buddy, you sure do look like, a lot like one. Don't call me a hippie. You sure do look a lot like one. Don't call me a hypocrite. Where are you on Sunday? You're just wearing a Christianish garment. But if you've got on the robe of righteousness, You'll be altogether different. You're not trying. Oh yeah. How is he ever going to wear that Babylonian-ish garment when you're standing in the army of the army of God? Hey, may you stand out when you've got a robe on that looks like the world. Hey, may you're going to have to keep it hid and you're only going to wear it when you're in the world. Hey, be one way or the other. Hey, man, he said be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. You need to be godly. Hey, I said you need to be godly it's important for you to be godly act godly, talk godly look godly in this present world the only Bible some will ever read is you and I wonder what version you are am I a preacher or do I wear a preacher's ish garment This is a pre preacher-ish garment. A necktie, a suit. Now, I, I want to look good because this is what God called me to do and I feel like this is the way the Lord wants me to do it. I'm not necessarily look good, but I'm going to look the best I can for the office God has put me in. That's just my conviction. You know, I mean, I could, I'd preach and be able to overalls and a long sleeve shirt. I don't care. But this is, this is, what, but this is just an ish garment. There's a whole lot of people cover up a whole lot with this. Oh, Lord. But is it because of the issues in your life that there's so many dying out of the real army? The guilty one had to be killed, but the innocent ones died dry. 
But it was because of the guilty one that they had to die. But be assured of one thing. It will catch up to you. I said it will catch up to you. Let me feel of you. What kind of CDs you got? What do you look at on your phone when there's nobody else looking? What do you read? I've heard people say, oh, I can't read. I don't read the Bible. But yet we'll go down the road and I'll say, what that billboard say? And they'll talk back to me. Deceiver. Deceiver. It's just an excuse. It's not a burden. It's quiet. Buddy, I'm a telling it right, ain't I? If you want to be genuine, don't be, don't put on a front. Don't put on a front. I heard one fellow say one time, I know I'm backslid, but I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not. I'd rather somebody be like that. Somebody come on to church anyway, get in the choir, holler amen the loudest, and go right back out them doors living in sin. Because you're a deceiver. You're just putting on front. You're fake. You're fake. Oh, Jesus. What do we feel like? What do we smell like? He smelled of him, Johnny, and he said, you've got the smell of the field. I wonder how many of you smell like the holy. I'm sitting on the church pew. Yeah, but we've got a right to smell of you. And what you sm- My boys will go play outside in the rain, jump in the creek, wallow in the mud, and they'll come crawl up in my lap. And the first thing I say is, you smell like a night crawler. Because they've been out yonder on the ground. We come in here and we got it all figured out just right. Park in our same spots. Sit in our same pew. But I wonder do we smell like the field? Or have we been dwelling in the tents of the righteous? And we've got the smell of God in our life. Or do we smell like the world? Don't call me a pig. I'm not saying you're a pig. But some of you smell like you've been with them. Do we have to hide when we see the preacher coming? When we see something that shouldn't be there and your hand's called at it, first thing you'll do is either lie about whose it is or have to confess And Brother Johnny, our flesh don't like to admit we're a deceiver. God help us. He got the blessing in this story. But you look at me and you look at me good and straight. We're not dealing with Isaac. We're dealing with God. And if you want to be blessed of God, don't you dare think you can cover up with anything and be something you're not and God not jerk the wool off of your party. And say, you better get, I'm so thankful. There's been times, Brother Johnny, I'll be honest, I've I've put on front. But I'm thankful for the word that would pull that goat skin off of me and say, now get right with God and be real. And be real while he begins to play. Let's all stand. You see, the thing about it is, the great thing about it is, You can come to God and tell him anything and he won't tell nobody else. But you keep being a deceiver and the wrong person sees it, everybody's going to know. And there'll be a big change. You're going to quit the church because of all the rumors that's bombarding you when you can just come and say, God, I know I've been doing things that don't please you. God, help me not to be putting on a front. These people want things from God and they'll do all kinds of things till they get it. And then they'll go back to who they really was because they're just putting on the front anyway. But God, I want to live as close as I can. And we need to have the prayer that God, I want to live as close as I possibly can. If you don't ever answer my prayer, 
I know you can, but I want a relationship with you as a person to person, not because of what I think I'm going to get, because of who you are. Help us to fall in love with Jesus and not the grab bag that he carries. Help us to love Jesus if Jesus is all we got. Because Jesus is all you need. But if you'll seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added. God, I'll do this. I'll serve you if you'll do this. You've got it all out of line. You're putting on a front. Lord, help us to draw nigh unto him and the rest of that stuff will come as he sees needed. Lord, help us to be real, real, real. Because the real Esau is on his way back. It's going to create hatred. Lord, help us not to try to hide anything. If you're in this building this morning and you do not need to pray, would you please be sensitive to the Holy Ghost? Come and pray with somebody in this altar. Help us, Jesus. Help me as the man of God in this pulpit to be real. Help me, please. Help me, please. Help me, please. Lord, in Jesus' name, Jesus name Jesus name Lord I thank you Lord I thank you God that you'll turn the light on Oh Jesus Lord would you